Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to render brushed aluminium or aluminum for you Americans. Um, so what I've got here is just a little scene with a light set up in an HDRI. Um, I'm going to show you two different methods for doing this. One is going to be a, a swirly sort of method that you'd see on the bottom of a frying pan, for example. And the other method is just going to be a linear style one. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. I will show you exactly how to do it. So we're just going to create a uh, cylinder to start with. And I'm just going to delete the top and the bottom because we don't need them because I'm only showing you... Whoop, I'm only showing you the... Uh, linear in one direction. Now when you do this you do want to have UVs um, on your mesh so we're just going to do a cylindrical UV there. Alright so we're going to start by creating a Pixar surface shader and assigning it and in the hypershade editor just map that back out and this is going to be brushed aluminium. I really hope I spelled that right. Okay, and um, what we're going to need to do is create a texture for this to work. So uh, we'll jump into Photoshop for a minute, and what we'll do is create a new uh, texture. It will make it 2K to start with, uh, so it's 2048, uh, 2048, and we may need to resize this depending on how our noise works out. So basically, we're going to start by going into filter and going noise and add noise. Uh, and I'm going to bring it up so there's enough white-black contrast. You do want it to be pretty well contrasted. Um, uniform or Gaussian doesn't really matter. Probably uniform, I would just theorize, might actually look better. I normally use uh, Gaussian, but we'll see how this looks. It doesn't really matter. It's just a quick test. Um, so what we want to do is make this appear as lines going on in one direction. So what we'll do is go into Filter. We will go into Blur and we'll go into Motion Blur. And you can see we've got it on the zero angle. And then we can just increase that till we get the right amount of lines. Now it does tear a little bit at the edge there. Um, so that's why we're just going to crop that out and it won't be a big deal to us. Um, also, I'm not going to make this um, seamless. You could go through and make a seamless one. Um, but just for the sake of this, um, I'm just going to do it quickly. So um, we've got that there like that. And we will. Uh, go into image. We're going to make some adjustments to the brightness and contrast. We'll just increase the we'll increase the contrast. We might need to do that twice. Yeah, that will work. All right, just going to hit C to crop it in, and I'm just going to hold down Alt and Shift to bring it in so it's within the sides there. It's obviously going to mess up our resolution, so it's not perfectly 2048 like it was, but that will do and we can work with that even though it's not really seamless you may not actually be able to see the seams very easily anyway de depending on the surface so this could be okay uh, so what we'll do is we'll save this as a tiff and we'll save it wherever you want to save it to I've already made this before so I'm going to make this brushed pattern hori as in horizontal and then we'll go back into Maya and in the hypershade editor, I'm just going to pick our uh, texture. Go to the picture texture node, and we're going to create a bump as well. Pick our bump. Run the RG, uh, sorry, run the alpha into the input bump, and then the result N into the bump normal. And then we're going to make this look like aluminium by uh, reducing our diffuse gain to zero and then we're going to actually use physical because it's just a bit easier increase the extension coefficient and the edge color to be white and we'll just bring this into um, be like a tannish color sort of off whitey tannish color something like that uh, and the roughness will set to be 0.6 um, I'm going to be making it a bit rough to start with so it's easier to spot uh, in the render. Uh, and I'll show you a trick with refraction index as well with the color so you can see what I'm doing there. But um, make sure that's assigned by selecting the mesh and right clicking and holding and assigning. Um, and we'll make sure that we open the bump map that we just created in Photoshop. So what did I call that? Brushed pattern hurry tiff. And if that contrast isn't right, we can adjust it. Um, also, just make that you make sure your light is 
producing enough light for some reason this was really uh, not doing it for me so we'll see what it looks like now actually before we render that I also want to make smooth subdivisions on this so um, we're just going to go in here under the cylinder attribute editor and drop down into subdivision scheme and set it to Camel Clark and we can re-render alright so the um, bump map just loaded there for a second so you can see it's pretty simple to create now the bump is way too strong at the moment uh, which is why we're not getting much specular highlights along the edge there um, and actually you don't actually need to use the just thinking about it can be a good idea just to use the specular bump map so we can actually just run that in there and uh, stick it in the specular bump and they'll just free you up to do some other bump maps if you are putting some other surface detail on there as well so we're going to jump into the bump map and we're going to set that to 0.01 because I'm going to make it quite subtle and we'll just run the IPR again and you can see what a difference that makes so with too high a bump map level um, it does sort of lose the, um, the specular highlight um, also further refinement we'll jump back into the shader there and we're just going to go to advanced and we're going to change the specular model to ggx um, ggx has just got a softer fall off on the edge of the highlight and it tends to look better for things like aluminium um, and other metals so if we show that IPR now um, obviously I can't compare because I just did it on the fly there but um, if you just wind back you'll be able to see that it's got a bit of a softer fall off now um, if you are finding that that is um, you're not getting enough repeats like for the size of your object you would think you'd see a lot uh, finer uh, finer sanding marks which is essentially what brushed aluminium is um, how it's made it's just sanded essentially in, in one direction um, or with a circular um, or orbital sander um, but what you can do is uh, get a manifold a manifold 2d and run the result into Pixar texture manifold and then you can just increase this to say we'll just try five on the s and the t um, you could also stretch it if you wanted to make one size smaller than the other um, that would stretch it obviously so yeah now compared to that you've got a much finer um, set of uh, coarseness there so and you can actually see that seam line so I would probably go in and make that seamless but uh, just to keep things brief we'll keep it as is so that is the basic theory of doing um, of doing the brushed aluminium uh, now we'll do a, something slightly more complex uh, with the bottom of something like a frying pan so what I'm going to do is just create another cylinder and I'm just going to delete all the bottom faces so we've just got this top face here and what I'll do again is make it so it has subdivisions uh, this doesn't work so well without subdivisions uh, I'll center the pivot and we need a UV map this as well so actually we'll see what UVs it's got okay so it's already got UVs in place so what we'll do is select that we're going to move this to the center of the grid and then we'll just scale that up so we can get more texture information onto a larger area now obviously if we assigned our existing one to it it's just going to be uh, going in a line so yeah you can see that the uh, the texture information is just going on that one direction uh, from bottom to top and we're getting a little bit of weirdness uh, in the surface that's just because it is triangulated rather than quad mesh if you're using a quad circle that would be better uh, but again just for the sake of brevity we're going to stick with this it won't look too bad once we get into the final um, so we'll jump back into Photoshop um, I'm just going to close that create a new file same thing 2048 and we'll go to filter and we will noise uh, add noise same situation again but this time when we go to filter we're going to distort and we're going to use uh, twirl 
and we're just going to increase the amount of twirl up to 999 degrees actually I don't know if you can go higher can you yeah 999 is my max so um, you'll see that creates a spherical uh, sort of so a, a twirl in the middle there um, I might do that again just so we get a really nicely refined twirl now you can crop this in as if you want um, I didn't do this previously I might see how it looks when I do it this way it might actually work slightly better just make sure when you scale uh, when you crop it and bring it in that you um, hold uh, alt and shift or control and shift I forgot even how to do it I just do it naturally um, just so it, it centers itself um, because that UV information is on the center of the grid so we'll just save that as a tiff again and this is going to be brushed pattern circle really good naming conventions here okay so before we start doing um, our change in texture we're going to get rid of our manifold because we're just going to use it at the square one by one and make sure you load your uh, circular pattern that one there and to begin with we're just going to increase the bump back to one we're also going to make the roughness uh, point we'll call it 0.7 just so it's quite obvious uh, when we do it and we're also going to create a PXR ramp I'm going to use this to control our uh, an isotropy. Basically how this is going to work is we'll run the ramp RGBR into the specular anisotropy and we're going to create three more nodes there and we'll make that black and we'll make that black and basically what we're doing here is we're making it so um, the outside nodes are the same color and then it's alternating in between we will need to change our ramp to be radial okay so you can see what's happening there we're getting a variation in the specular reflection there um, through the center there and then on the sides there you can quite clearly see the difference um, it's one of those things where it's difficult to see depending on the direction but now we can go on and refine our uh, bump map for example and uh, so just also to make it clear the um, ramp is basically controlling this um, reflection uh, quality so the areas where it's uh, black or white I'm not sure which one it is I'd have to actually it's because it's sort of hard to test actually but I'd assume the areas that are white considering there's more of it are the areas where it's got uh, or it's reflecting away from the camera and then with the black it's reflecting toward the camera so which is why you're getting more uh, reflection there and less on the white areas so what we can do is go into our bump and we'll just change that to 0.1 and we'll see if that looks better might be still a little bit much maybe 0.01 something quite fine if you're doing the bottom of a frying pan it's it's usually finished quite finely because it's you know uh, meant to be in a kitchen um, also you're going to get better results if you were using a quad mesh obviously like I said the tries are really messing that up but for the sake of this it will work just fine um, if you do have a circle just make it a squared internal mesh rather than the try um, but you can see that is working nicely <coughs> and also we'll go back in and adjust the roughness to say back to 0.6 maybe 0.55 you don't really want the transition between this darker area and this lighter more rough area of the uh, specular reflection to be too varied uh, otherwise it won't look very realistic so try and get them sort of within firing range of each other something like that 0.45 Oh yes, and the other thing I was going to talk about was the refraction index. So just a really cheaty way of doing this, if you're in uh, physical mode. Um, so you'll see that the reflection kind of has a blue quality to it. Um, the opposite side of the color wheel is blue. So if I switch it to be on the blue side, you'll see it's orangey. So it's kind of a rule of thumb. It's a quick way of doing it. So if I put up in green, it's going to be purple. Put on purple, it's going to be green very easy um, to remember so generally when you're doing aluminium you do look for a bluish tint um, it's not 
maybe 100% uh, physically accurate, but it does tend to look good. Um, also for these um, circular um, ones, you definitely need to have smooth subdivisions on, otherwise it won't work too well. Uh, that is pretty much it though for this tutorial. Hopefully that's helped you if you're doing some uh, bit of modeling and you've got something metal and you want to make it look brushed aluminium. It's a great way to just put a little bit of extra surface variation in there. You could use this with a Pixar layer uh, surface, which is just here. Um, and then you could add decals on, and that sort of thing on top of it to give it that extra bit of realism. Add bumps to those decals and you're laughing. Um, if you did like the tutorial though, uh, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as I do a tutorial just like this every week for all sorts of 3D software, uh, like Render Man in this example. I've been doing a lot of Render Man, so maybe it's mostly Render Man at the moment. It's just what I've got time for. Um, but yeah, that's um, pretty much it. If you want to see more of our work, check the Instagram link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.